Hello, everybody, and welcome to our inside webinar. Is this the end of line for competitive intelligence? My name is that's Rainer Michele. I'm the director for the Institute for Competitive Intelligence, and it's my pleasure to host today a pretty interesting session, pretty thought provoking, as you will see in a moment. With me, let's say in a virtual sense, I have Chad Eng. Hello, Chad, are you here? I am here. Hello, everyone. Oh, very good. So it's always the first sentence in such a telco uh, that I'm glad to see that we at least have a standing line. So yeah, I assume the title on its own, end of line for competitive intelligence, has all in it that we want to learn about and see what the future of our profession is really all about. And this is why I would love to hand over to Chad in a moment. Then he will present some 20, 25 minutes, really foot for thought. And to make sure that it's not just him giving us a wonderful lecture, we of course love to see some of your comments. Unfortunately, we can't open the microphones. That would be a bit too noisy. No, we need your comments via the chat function. As you can see in your panel, there should be a chat function, a window. And there you can simply post your questions. I will read them out later on at the again, end of our session when Chad has finished with his presentation. And then Chad can try to answer as many comments and remarks coming up from your end. Okay, Chad, why don't we take it from here? All right. Let's see. Sure, this is moving forward. Okay. A uh, brief introduction about me. I've been doing competitive intelligence for about 15 years. Um, I have a library science master's degree and an MBA. So hopefully that will give you enough or give me enough credibility to uh, let me entice you for the next 20 to 25 minutes. So uh, as Rainer said earlier, this uh, the title of this is, is this the end of the line for competitive intelligence? And it's meant to be a little bit provocative. So um, as far as my agenda, I'm not going to go through this in depth, but I wanted you to understand that this is going, going to be a little bit of a journey today. So I won't focus on the agenda, but know that I do have some thoughts organized. <laughs> so as some background, uh, at the 2018 ICI conference, there was a panel discussion of experts at the end of the, the, the two-day workshops talking about what did they learn, what did, uh, you know, what, what, what did they find from this? And, and we had um, two practitioners uh, of CI. We had an academic talking about CI. And then we had somebody, uh, Xu Wang, who is not a competitive intelligence person. He is much more on the IT and tech side of things. He's a data scientist. And he really got people thinking about um, maybe we're too close, you know, being practitioners of of CI, we see, yes, everybody has an interest in CI and and the uh, the industry that, that we practice in is accelerating and everybody has high hopes. But Xu Wang kind of pressed us to think a little bit outside of the box. And and that's kind of what was the impetus of this of this uh, presentation that I'm gonna talk about. And, and I'll, ooh, I'm trying, going to be a little bit provocative and make you feel uncomfortable and push you a little bit. But, um, as these experts were, were talking, uh, they covered the product life cycle, which a lot of us are familiar with, introduction, growth, maturity, and decline of a product or a um, concept. And, and this, that's really what I, what I wanna focus on this time. Um, and, and I'm gonna kind of take you through the seven stages of grief, which or, or some people have five stages, some people have seven stages, but um, I just kind of wanna, uh, prepare you for for what we're going to talk about, <laughs> and and warn you in advance. And and this is, again, I'm going to be provocative and and not uh, hopefully not inciting riots and things like that. But uh, I will give you a couple of warnings. Um, there will be things in here that will shock you. There, I'll, I'll make some statements. Um, I'm going to play the, the the part of a futurist and and kind of the devil's advocate and and a little bit more on the negative side. But again just being provocative because it, it will it will open up your mind a little bit, I'm, I'm hoping. Um, I'm not a bad person, but um, I just, I, I wanna make sure I, I give a little bit of a warning. Um, 
So I'm just going to jump right into it with the seven stages of grief. And the reason I'm going to start with that is because I think in the next five to 10 years, we're not going to have jobs in competitive intelligence anymore. So that's hopefully this is where the shock and denial, this is where everybody, um, I gave this presentation at the 2019 ICI conference. There were some gasps in the room and, and grumbles and things like that, but I'm going to walk you guys through this. So, so we're going to, we're going to talk about how to get, get through this and, and how to come out the other side. So if we look at kind of the product life cycle um, for competitive intelligence, it, it, this isn't going to be an exact science. There isn't research on this, but it, there are some patterns I want to, I want to point out. So the 1980s, Competitive intelligence came into being in 1986. There were enough people interested um, that they formed an association, and that was that was called SCIP at the time, Society of Competitive Intelligence Professionals at the time. And then in 20 or sorry, 2008, there was the financial crisis all over the world. Um, SCIP took a huge hit, and and they started to merge with Frost and Sullivan um, after it reported some financial difficulties. Um, and then in 2010. Uh, they they change the name. They try to re revitalize competitive intelligence by changing what SKIP stood for. So they changed it to um, strategic and competitive intelligence professionals. Did it work? Uh, a little bit. It did. Um, and, and just to kind of show another parallel track, we're going to look at, at SKIP membership numbers. And these aren't exact, but um, they're what we have reported. They're rough estimates, rough, rough estimations. Um, so uh, there weren't any in 1986, but by 1989, they reported 1,156. Massive, massive growth between there. Um, and then it started to slow down around 2000 and 1999. And in 2000, there was the first negative trend. So we saw the numbers start to drop. And, and so the good news is, I think, people... Um, people aren't necessarily losing interest in competitive intelligence. It's just becoming morphed into other functions. So, you know, we ask yourself, why does it look like it's moving down? And I have had a number of discussions with Dr. Craig Fisher. He's, um, he's a, writes a lot of books and articles on competitive intelligence. And, and he, he posits that uh, it just it never became, never achieved the designation of professional. There are other things like accounting and legal and marketing. They all have professions. Um, Dr. Fisher thinks that the field is still growing, uh, but, but a lot of people are doing it off the side of the desk or in, in conjunction with a lot of other things they're doing. So some of the people that are doing competitive intelligence don't even know that that's what they're doing. So this, this is becoming much more difficult to measure. And uh, one of the speakers at the 2018 conference, um, he talked about how the term predictive analytics was, was a big buzzword. And we started to see that number, the number of products being used by marketing with predictive analytics in the title or in the, the description was, were increasing at a certain, a certain pace. And then they stopped because that was being rolled into all of these other functions. So we, we think this is a very similar thing with competitive intelligence. A lot of people are doing it. We've taught a lot of people how to do this. Um, are, are people doing it as good as we can do it as CI you know, practitioners and, and experts in the field? Probably not, but you know, I, I wonder if we're there if people are getting good enough at it. So I'm, I'm hoping at this point you're you're still mad, you're you're upset. Um, I'm not saying these numbers that I that I showed on the previous slides prove anything, but they definitely show some trends and of course support my argument in this, in this presentation. So um, hopefully you could you could see some of that. So let's look at what what kind of opportunities there have. You know, what if we market ourselves better? What if we're you know position ourselves near the CEO? What if we change our acronym? What if we uh, what if there's a certification? These are all really good ideas. Um, you know, they're they're all measurable things that that we can kind of incrementally move forward with 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 keeping CI alive. But uh, you know, I question: it, it, Do these things just look okay to our supervisors if we implement these things? Is it just okay? And and we have a CMO at at our company that pushes us really strongly. And I would say that she's not looking for incremental change. She's looking for for much more. Uh, larger steps and, and much more massive change. It may not be enough to save our jobs if we're just doing some of these smaller changes. 
and again, just being honest and, and provocative. Provocative. So, you know, what we looked at on those previous slides was kind of bargaining. How can we, you know, put some mandates on things and 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 kind of help ourselves creep forward slowly. So, and 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 I know a lot of us have a, lot, a very high opinion of ourselves, and and we do excellent work, and and we want we want our bosses and our supervisors and our our, our people that are above us to really see the work that we're doing. But if you asked somebody in your organization, um, do we need a legal team? They would say, yes, of course we need a legal team. Do we need an accounting team? Yes, of course we need an accounting team. And you can ask that about IT and HR and marketing and all of these other professions. But if you ask somebody if we need a competitive intelligence team, they may not have that same answer. They may not understand what we do. But but after 40 years of, of doing competitive intelligence, I feel like either we're explaining it wrong or they're, they're just not getting it. So that's, you know, maybe there's a different tactic we can we can do. And of course, I you know, I, I also am a CI practitioner and I enjoy and I love what I do, but it's a little bit depressing that that people don't don't get it always. So um, I'm going to join you in this thinking and also be depressed. It 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 is a little bit depressing. <laughs> so as we look at um, you know what kind of realistic solutions can can we do? And I, I've got some I've got some examples. I'm going to skim through them pretty quickly. But what if we could take this product life cycle and add this this up curve? And this is something um, that number that a number of uh, public libraries in the U.S. have done. They you know they librarians thought when with the advent of Google and the internet that books were going to go by the wayside. So they had to really change themselves and reinvent themselves to to stay afloat. Um, and in most cases, it's working very well. Public libraries are no longer in danger. They're no longer, um, you know, worried for their future. They've they've just had to evolve. And some of the things they've done is they've turned themselves into uh, technology workshops and uh, maker spaces and things like that, and focusing on digital the digital literacy and and increasing access. So they they have really changed their approach. And I think it's really interesting. I do have a library background and librarians are notoriously resistant to change. But a lot of us are in tech industries and, and future looking industries. And I don't think we should be resistant to change. So I, I'm, I'm hoping to kind of poke you forward and, and, and help you with that. And I, you know, I think all we want is somebody to do is to appreciate all the work that we do in, in gathering it, collating it, cleaning it up, analyzing it, and nobody else would be able to find these trends, except there's a lot of people doing data science that don't agree with this. And again, I'm being provocative, and and, and I know uh, AI and, and natural language processing can't do everything. But again, I just want you to think, you know, what else can we do that that maybe AI can't? So uh, I don't have all the, of the I don't have all of the answers. But I want you. I want you to think about some of these possible. There are these possibilities. Get your brain moving in the right direction. So you know, artificial intelligence and, and NLP definitely. But but what if there was some sort of you know from the um, from the the API perspective? Uh, you know, is there is there some sort of module we could have a set of raw data where we're all just tapping in through a different kind of portal? And and you know, here's how it looks now. And and look at you know, future trends and how can you adjust some of these levers to 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 do this? And maybe there isn't a CI portal. Maybe CI is just rolled into all of the marketing portals and strategy portals. Just you know, it's an interesting way of looking at it. And again, I'll keep repeating. I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to try to elicit those from you. Um, Xu Long is using APIs for everything right now. He he admitted he was doing it just on consumers. But he thinks that's going to change drastically. So, what if you became a specialist? What if you, you know, what if you changed what you did as CI and became a data scientist or a trainer? Kind of in, uh, in instead of lamenting that, that CI isn't a recognized profession, you know, how could you? And, and it's difficult to explain to your mother or your grandmother what you do. Um, let, let's look at some of these other roles. But what else can we do with with CI? So what we have here is testing. We've got some some theories that that maybe these things would work. So we're working working our way through these seven stages. So one of the things I want to challenge you is 
spend a little bit of time like actively you know, sitting at your desk, spending a half an hour a week, just what else can I do? What, you know, and, and, and try to answer uh, the what if questions. What if we could do this? What if we could do that? Um, I would want to be able to drive this and not just sit back and wait wait for somebody else to do that. I don't think this is just the IT team's uh, focus. I, I think it's not their responsibility. Um, look at what are universities doing? What's Google doing? What are tech startups doing? What's Elon Musk doing? Um, if you have an idea, run it past your IT folks or your technology group. I, um, again, it's, it's, it's not their responsibility. Um, I, I know my own company focuses on what healthcare IT companies are doing, and we're look, we're doing competitive intelligence on companies doing doing AI, and it, and it's really fun to me that we're focused on what these other companies are doing with artificial intelligence, and we're not try, we're not figuring out what we can use AI for in the CI world. I think kind of sky's the limit, but you know let's let's you know let, let's take the take a, a note from people who are doing innovative things. There are, there are companies putting chips in people's heads, trying to figure out how that works around brain waves and genomics and things like that. But I, I don't know why, why our group is so, so far behind in utilizing AI. And I know some companies are better than others and some, some, uh, some uh, practitioners are better at using these tools, but if they can help us, it would be immensely better. And, and you know what we're doing is not as difficult as genomic sequencing. So so why are these technologies just racing past us? I think we need to uh, jump on the bandwagon and, and ask ask how we can get to these things. And you know think about just don't think about it or, or don't think about these new tools or, or artificial intelligence as a research problem. Think of it like from the intake process. Um, think of it as um, user satisfaction how can we do uh, support delivery of, of different tools think about a completely new methodology somebody invented kanban and lean and six sigma maybe we can come up with something for specifically for ci so again just trying to get people to to accept this hypothesis and, and you're allowed to say no the ci is is not in danger but you know i just kind of want you want you to think a little bit forward um would love to hear people's ideas about this and i know we're not able to to open up the telephone lines but you know if if my email is, is in this deck feel free to reach out to me if you have some ideas you want to bounce off of off of me um does it look like knight rider in 1982 and we've already got that technology is it like the matrix in 1999 and we do have some of that technology uh there's a science fiction television show called the expanse and that also got me thinking about what can we do with natural language processing where we're talking to computers and computers are giving us the answers we need. Does it look like Google Glass? Does it, you know, maybe we just need to talk to kids or literally our children who, who have grown up completely connected. I didn't grow up with computers and, and, and a lot of, a lot of these younger people did. And so they don't understand that we think differently than they do. Maybe we're missing out on something. Um, so, so I just want to think, I want you to think past being a data scientist and they're very good at data visualization as like a starting point, but, um, or, sorry, they're thinking of data visualization as the ending point and, and here's how we can visualize this data. Maybe that's where we need to start talking about it. What else can we do? I, you know, think down the road 10 years and, and I, you know, I said, I didn't have any answers, but. Maybe a solution is to hold a future state summit at your organization, get five or six people in the room, have a, a data scientist, a CI practitioner, a futurist, a strategy person, a consumer person, and just have them all talk about, I, you know, here's what I would like to do in the next five years. What are the steps we need to do to get there? And I think that's, you know, maybe that's a simple question with a lot of difficult answers, but just kind of want to get you thinking, uh, how how can we we fix some of these things? And I know competitive intelligence is evolving, and I I fully believe that. Um, I just want to make sure we find new ways of providing value. And and you know, are we going to be rolled up into every strategic project, or are we going to be forgotten? And I, and I hope it's not that we're gonna we're gonna be forgotten. I think it's I think it's just such a valuable tool. 
I think we're doing it right. I think we should be proud of this function and what we've moved in it. I just, I think, I think it's it's really important that we keep doing this. And and I think a lot of our executives also think it's important. But let's let's show them how how important. And 2024 is right around the corner. I know it's kind of a terrifying thought, but um, you know, maybe just try to figure out the answer. Wouldn't it be nice if? And you know, and how can I make that happen? I think those are really important steps. And again, simple questions with very complicated answers. So that's, that's I think that's pretty much all of my presentation. Um, as a librarian, I of course have to give you additional reading. Um, if the last half an hour hasn't angered or terrified you, um, I would caution you about reading some of these books. These are uh, a little bit alarming, but they're really interesting to to get those creative juices flowing. So um, I would encourage you to to find these find these books, uh, find these authors. And, and I think you're really going to be surprised. And I think if you come up with some ideas, you're going to surprise in a positive way your supervisors. And, and, and I don't think CI is in danger. So hopefully um, this presentation will get some of your uh, thoughts flowing and um, be able to, I don't know, I, I, I think we, we can come up with the answers rather than waiting for somebody else to tell us what the answer should be. So I think that is is the end of my presentation and i'm happy to answer any questions um that that rainer has or has on the chat room yeah thank you very much i think everybody as you indicated is pretty much in this kind of shocked stunned amazed face so <laughs> most people i guess have to get through what you just presented and of course i I have to admit i have to think about a lot of this stuff as well but this is why we're here right so uh, let's read out some of the comments just pouring in. Uh, chat, great material, even if it's a little terrifying. <laughs> With a looming recession, at least here in the US, looking more imminent. Do you think recession times make CI more or less important? I, I have always wondered the answer to that. Um, it, it, in some cases, budget tightening makes people more inventive and more creative and they find ways to use ci or other tools that they have to get to get to answers and 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 they do this by not spending money on tools and vendors and things like that but they do it with innovative thinking so i think it's dependent on your probably your own company but but you know also the industry that you're in if you are in an innovative industry with creative thinking people i think it can uh, a recession can spark new ideas in competitive intelligence so that's that's probably my more positive answer um yes budget cuts tend to cut people as well as resources um probably short term it's would be a little bit more scary for the CI industry, but I do think it generates really, really smart thinking. Okay, now I'm, I think this makes a lot of sense, especially when it comes to ah, focusing, streamlining, and getting through the whole mess. Then CI should prove its value. At least my take here. Yeah, yeah. please um, use the chat function. I would love to make one comment from my own perspective. You had this wonderful life cycle chart initially with the skip up and down thing uh, I, I, I like the comment why why wouldn't we use this is very frustrating and i agree to some extent if you were to nail the whole destiny of uh, ci to this very scip organization which of course I, I challenged that this would be a good idea as it is very us centric and i guess it had several birth defects i.e yes Whenever it was founded, set up, got some momentum, and you, you sort of pointed out this was 80s, 90s, it was somehow, if I dare say, from my perspective, the European perspective, of course, that it was really going in the wrong direction. And, and, and this, when then the recession came, of course, there was a bit of a missing link to reality, to be honest. But that's a bit of an insider kind of joke here. Um, why not using the Gartner hype curve? We all remember this was a thing with a very peaky, everybody's talking about a new bus term. 
a new methodology, a new technology, what have you, and then it sort of go through this very dreadful disillusionment phase where really nothing goes on and where most people simply get rid of this idea or if they invested in technology, they simply get out of that. And only then the Gartner hype curve um, describes this kind of, then it's time to reinvest and really make something out of it. My understanding is we're pretty much in this phase. So this is not a hype any longer. This is nothing where you can raise a lot of, let's say attendees at a conference just by announcing, hey, and I will tell you how it's done and you will be happy forever. This is simply done. <laughs> But now it's time to really make something out of it. And here is what you, uh, where I think you made some good, good comments on using technology, not to substitute, not to replace what we're doing, but really getting smarter, getting better of what we're doing anyhow. So AI was another hype <laughs> term coming up, not only these days, but for some time now. Again, my, my, my take is on my sort of uh, inspiration from your presentation is, we better understand what's available as tools and use it to some extent that we get all the laurels and credentials of being very efficient or simply back to say mining for nuggets that we're better at the job as librarians, as the would be one of the Google lonely CI stars in a company. And then it should be a wonderful future for us. One idea that came up when I was sort of thinking what you just described. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that 100. percent I, I, I think the, uh, the the Gartner hype cycle is a much more positive way of looking at this and does give <laughs> much more hope for CI. And and I you know I admit I did I did look at that and had this uh, that in the original presentation, but it wasn't it, it wasn't alarming enough. So <laughs> I agree with with your. Uh, with your your hypothesis of, of using that, because I think I think that is much more accurate, and I think if we can find some ways to pull levers and make you know either build the hype or or make it exciting for people again by by doing something um, something we haven't done before and something people aren't used to, I think that is a much more positive and, and optimistic way of, of of looking at CI in the future. So yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And here, if I dare add, not that we're going now in the dialogue, but you mentioned Craig Fleischer and his thoughts about are we a profession or not, which was over years. And of course, I'm well known to, to Craig and uh, all the other academics. Maybe this was one of the main underlying wrong assumptions that we have to become a profession. And only then we recognize, because this is the way it works over the last centuries, whenever a new, so to say, profession came up. But maybe this was really a waste of time and energy because as we realized, there's so much, so many flavors around how to use what we're doing. It's part of so many other jobs as you indicated. So maybe we never get this kind of professional, uh, the profession status, but it doesn't mean we're not doing some value adding job, something that is not to be substituted by others. Which again, might be one underlying assumption where you're right, we should change maybe our agenda to start with. Well, I, I do think with, with, you know, coming up with innovative thinking and new ways of, of leveraging, leveraging technology or leveraging new methodology, I think by having some of, some of that turned into a, um, some sort of credentialed program. And I know, I know there are, a, a few out there and I and I think they're getting better some most of them seem to be getting better I, I think those that add add new material and and focus on what are what are companies trying to do with CI I think those those uh, I don't know, some, some are academic programs some are certificate programs some are, are, are different different ways of getting there but I think having some sort of formalized, um, future looking, uh, just set, I don't even, as simple as a checklist. If you can do these 10 skills, you are an expert in competitive intelligence. And I think, oh, I, I think I, that I fully agree. That oh, would be something like a, like a body of knowledge. I mean, this is what you're indicating, but again, it comes in so many flavors and smells that it's very difficult to really 
set up a community, a, a professional community that would sort of uh, swear in on what we're doing and only this is, when you're licensed, let's say you're allowed to do it. This was right. my remark about Craig Fleischer and some other uh, really well crafted ideas that initially you might have thought to kill a red herring or find a pink elephant, but it seems to be not around. So why stick with this old world rather than moving on as you indicated? Okay, but, but, but um, chat, we are sort of now a little bit into our own conversation. Let's read out <laughs> one other post coming up. Uh, why can't we can use scenario planning to reimagine the future of CI? How can CI fuel co-optition and collaboration? Uh, it, I'm, I'm glad you brought up scenario planning. Uh, we at, at Moon Company, we just did a competitive intelligence summit and we brought in a futurist um, and, and we had them talk about how can we, you know, as CI professionals kind of build the, the groundwork for scenario planning and, and look, you know, a lot of us have done uh, wargaming exercises where we build the pre-work, we, we build um, kind of the, the, the foundation for having, a, you know, executives in a room talking about, or, you know, uh, imagining they are in the mind of the competitor. So with scenario planning, and, and looking into the future, um, we we were able to find, you know, there, there are different ways to do that. But I think having that instead of, you know, three-year approach or five-year approach, let's look at 10-year approach and, and set up some scenarios that, similar to this presentation, are a little bit provocative, um, you know, things that will, will kind of scare you into action. You know, if, if competitor X um, invents something or, you know, acquires a company, you know, maybe we need to respond before that happens. And, and, and that's what kind of, if, if you can drive the future and, and make changes before your competitor does, it's obviously much more advantageous to you. So on the scenario planning front, I would, I guess I would look, look at some futurists ideas and and methodologies of of putting putting very and I keep using the word provocative I just I think it's it's such an important word <laughs> to use when when looking at and trying to force people out of their comfort zone um, I, I think using some futurist methodologies I, I think can really open up ideas that you hadn't thought of and I, I think that adds value and it it definitely gets you recognition and visibility from those senior leaders who you sometimes have to help think outside of the box so okay thank you uh here's the next question you mentioned librarians as a kind of uh, fate related organization <laughs> okay. what can we really learn from sla that's the american right um, association for librarians how are they evolving and what did they do maybe better if I dare it than skip the very example that you made so what are the lessons learned I think the question is um, I, I did look at some some membership numbers and uh, uh, educational tracks of both SLA um, American Library Association um, some of the state library association conferences kind of run run very similarly it's hard to find patterns in those, but if anything, you know, being res uh, reactive and, and responsive to things that have happened, I, I think is not as effective as figuring out what what the future problems are going to be and then developing coursework or, or curriculum to address those before they happen. So I feel like you know, bringing up the, the futurist term again, I feel like some of the organizations that are doing some innovative things are either working with or have on staff some futurists who are looking at, here are some potential problems. Let's, let's, set, up, um, uh, let's set up some sort of workshop or, or innovation track that addresses what's going to happen rather than here's how, to resp or here's how we responded um, here are some case studies where you know we address this problem. 
I think those that are looking in the future are they seem to be they seem to be doing a little bit better um, both attendance wise because that's also fresh material that's, that's things people haven't heard of yet and and I think that will also drive attendance and membership and things like that so I guess I don't have a specific scientifically evidenced uh, answer but um, just just what I've seen through observation and again totally us focused and I you know I apologize for that but um, it was it was what I was researching at the time <laughs> oh, fair, fair enough I come on you you can't know everything I, I can just add from my perspective here German perspective we have of course our national DGE our society for information archive archivists and the librarians and they are pretty much going down the drain for being what they are a society and association that nobody needs in the future at least nobody wants in the future so they are reshuffling and reorganizing and restructuring year after year but memberships definitely going down agreed there right. are some new academic initiatives now they all become information scientists at a social media somehow before or after information scientists and this seems to be the hottest thing on earth problem is of course as we all know information scientists on its own hmm, doesn't promise too much kind of a bit of a generalist knowledge base but then its application if it's an industrial job if it's more for publisher if it's more for news, newspapers or what have you so again there might be a big change but not really one solution only if I may add this perspective from what I know about these organizations. But agreed, it's a good case study to, to learn from the others and see what they come up with. By the way, same would be true for business intelligence as a software data mining related uh, initiative or profession. This was definitely very high P around the turn of the century and kind of same story, gone away or substituted by other disciplines. So again, there's a bit of a case study for us as well, or it's simply the way it works. There are certain cycles, certain needs, certain buzzwords, and then it's all evolving over time, as you indicated. Yes, please, more and more questions for chat coming up. Or of course, any other remarks now that we're talking along the lines of having an expert here Right. And as people are thinking of their questions, I, one of the things that I found really interesting um, when I gave this presentation at the 2019 ICI conference, the, the, the questions that were coming at, at me as the presenter started to slow down and people started engaging each other in the room with innovative ideas and what if we could do this? And I, I thought that was something I hadn't expected, but was really refreshing and it just made me think, if you're asking those questions in your workplace or, or with your colleagues, how many ideas can you generate rather than, you know, looking at one person to, to be the expert and give the answers? You know, I think it's a dialogue. And I think that was one of the most uh, energizing things about, about ICI uh, a few months ago. It was just, it was very, very invigorating. <laughs> Thank you. I love to hear that. Yeah, uh, no other questions coming up. So let me shoot over my final question. So what is your personal lessons learned at your very uh, water hole where you are sort of serving the profession here? You indicated already a boss that's very demanding, I understand. So what is your conclusion? What will happen to you in five years down the road? <laughs> and make it as, <laughs> as serious as possible, please. <laughs> uh, I, I personally think, and, and, and I'm in the, the healthcare IT industry, so electronic medical records and, and all sorts of things like that. So we're in a very IT focused industry. So um, when you said that, that my supervisor and, and, and her supervisor, they're, they're demanding, I, I, I think we started to recognize that the IT group was giving a certain level of service to the to the chief marketing officer that's who we report up to and and she wanted to know why our deliverables weren't giving the insights weren't giving the forward-looking pieces that the it group was giving and i i think 
her simple question, <laughs> while it, of course, alarmed all of us and hey, why aren't we giving those kind of insights, I think it started to get us into a conversation with the IT group to find out how can how can we accelerate our our expertise and and we have started to work with them on and, and asking questions about you know is it possible to do this here's what we'd love to do and and we have a lot of people on our IT team that enjoy a challenge and look love innovative thinking and they they have a network of people that help them build things so I think the partnership with the technology group really changed our thinking. Of course, it started out more of a, a competition because they were providing things that we weren't. But when we figured out we can we can add add value together, I think it really changed it changed our our trajectory and our our, our forward movement. So that's probably the biggest insight I have. Okay, which is a very honest answer, I guess. Yeah, but here we go. This is uh, thought provoking, as you said, and of course you can question whether this is the best way of doing it or whether it's just the kind of, well, we have to give up with what we've done in the past and simply have to learn how to well, play the data monkey game or whatever, and then we will survive. <laughs> Agreed. And again, I can provoke as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. If you could click on the final slide. Yeah, here we go. This is a bit of a uh, advertising coming up. It's about, of course, ICI and upcoming certificate programs from Bangalore to London to Germany. Check out if you're interested. And yes, Chad, thank you. You mentioned several times our annual com uh, conference and the next one's scheduled for May 2020. It's Germany again. And guess what? Our call for speaker is open. So if anybody's interested, just check out our website and you'll meet people like Jet and other interesting guys. <laughs> okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much, Jet, for a really inspiring presentation. And again, for thought, long weekend, hopefully coming up for everybody. Um, yeah, to be continued. I think that's the best final statement. It's not over, it's not the end of line, I guess, but it's not a linear, evolve evolution as you might have thought initially when we, we entered this discipline okay I so agree. thanks everybody thanks chat and see thank you very much bye bye everybody bye